Continuing on with our more special or unique forms of genetic situations, we're going to talk about something called epistasis. And we're actually really getting into what real world genetics problems are more like. You probably noticed that on a lot of our sample problems we make up silly situations or silly scenarios because most genetics aren't run on simple incomplete or complete monohybrid crosses. You know, Gregor Mendel was lucky that he was studying pea plants where that was the case and so he was able to figure out the basis of genetics, but the more we study the more we find that these are the more realistic situations. So let's talk about epistasis. Epistasis is a single trait. It's one trait, but it's two genes. Normally, if we have one trait, we have one gene, and if we have two traits, we have two genes. But in this case, we have one trait and two genes at different locations on a chromosome. We call that different loci. So there's a vocab word in here that you want to make sure you get. A loci is a location on a gene. So if this was on chromosome 15, here's my chromosome, here's my centromere, one gene might be here and the other one might be at a different location down towards the bottom. Now in epistasis, epi means upon, one of these traits is affecting or working upon the other one. In other words, one gene is controlling whether or not the other gene is turned on or off. So let's look at this. This is a gene, a trait rather, for color. We have one trait. What color is the flower going to be? But we have two genes that will control that. The gene says that the color of the plant will be either purple or white. So this is just a complete dominance purple plant, purple plant, white plant. But that second gene can actually turn on or off the production of the color. So if I have this, color is turned on, color is turned on, color is turned off. So for these plants to be purple, they must have a gene turned on, and even a plant that should be purple could, be, could turn out to be white if the color production is turned on. Off. Now while we have one trait, we do have two genes, so these are going to have to be the big 16 box Punnett squares. So let's try one of these. It says two unlinked loci affect mouse hair color. Big A, big A, or big A, little A mice are a gouty or brown, and little A, little A are albino because color production is blocked regardless of the phenotype of the second locus. So let's write that down. Let's make a key. Big A is brown and little a is a white mouse. Then it says that a second locus, um, the big B allele is dominant to the little b allele, so the agouti or brown is dominant to black. So brown is dominant to black. So now that we make our key, we think, which one is the on-off switch and which one is the trait? So it appears here that this is my trait whether the mouse will have coat color or not. And this one is kind of like my on-off switch. If I go back, it says genotypes with little a, little a are albino because all pigment production is blocked. So this is kind of like the off. So any mouse that ends up with little a, little a, no matter what the other letters are, is going to be white. If they have a big A, that's like the on switch, and they can have color. It says, what were the results of a cross between two agouti mice with the genotype big A, little a, big B, little b, big A, little a, big B, little b? What would that be, the result? So let's go through and do that. So we know we have to have our big 16 box Punnett squares. And we need to FOIL our parents. So the first A and the first B, the outer A and the outer B, the inner A and the inner B, and the last A and the last B. And then we go through and we fill in. And go ahead and pause the video if you need to, if I'm going through it too fast. So the first thing we do, just like always with these big problems, is count up our genotypes. 
So again, pause the video if I'm going through it too quickly, but take the time to count yours up. So I have one out of 16, big A, big A, big B, big B. Definitely running out of room down here. Okay, so I've counted up all my genotypes. Again, please pause the video if you're not quite there yet and check yours against mine. The more you do these, the quicker and more comfortable you'll be counting up the genotypes. Now for the phenotypes, we ignore the Punnett square. We just count off the genotypes. And here's what we always want to do. Listen carefully here about counting the phenotypes with epistasis. First thing we want to do is go through and count up anything that's turned off. Because if it's turned off, it doesn't matter what the other letters are, it has to be white. So remember my on-off switch is going to be that little a. So any mouse that has little a, little a is turned off. So I look and all these mice down here, I don't have to look at anything else. I know that that's all off. So I actually kind of count backwards. So I'm going to have four white mice. The rest of these mice now, I also can ignore the A feet genotype because I know that they're all going to be turned on and that they all will have color. So I only have to look at the B. So I look for first any black. These are my little B mice. So black mice, I have three. And then everything else is turned on and has a dominant color allele. So I know those will be brown. So I count those up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I have nine brown. Circle my answers. Let's try one more of those. In wheat color, the big R is red and the little r is brown. Big G, the big B gene controls expression of the R. Corn of genotype little b, little b will have white kernels. So basically that's telling me that this is my on switch and this is my off switch. If a red kernel wheat plant with a genotype big R, little r, big B, little b is fertilized by a brown wheat plant, little r, little r, big B, little b, what will the type of wheat plants be that are produced? So I make my big Punnett square, my 16 box Punnett square. I foil my parents. So let's foil this first one. The first R and B the outer R and B, the inner R and B, and the last R and B. And I foil my second parent, the first, the outer, the inner, and the last. And then I go ahead and I fill in my Punnett square. So again, pause the video if you need to and fill yours in. Then we want to count up our genotypes. So I take my first one, big R, little r, big B, little b, and I go through and I count how many of those I have. Looks like I have two. Go to my next one, big R, little r, big B, little b, one, two. 
three, four. It's like I have four of those. My next one, big R, little R, little B, little B. Looks like I have two of those. Then little R, little R, big B, big B. Two. Little R, little R, big B, little B. Four. And my last one, little R, little R, little, oops, little B, little B two of those. So again, be very careful when you count up phenotypes here. Always start by looking for the off switch. So I look for anything that has a little b because it doesn't matter what anything else is. Those will be white corn kernels. So I have little b, little b. So those four are white. It doesn't, I don't even have to look at the other letters. It's just off. Everything that's left has a big b, which means it's turned on, which means it can express its gene. So now I can ignore the B's and just look at the R's. I go through and I look for my recessive trait. How many do I have that are brown? These are my little R's, so I have six that are brown. And then everything that's left will be red, so I have six that are red. Circle my answer.